Most mutual funds or unit trusts out there are quite frankly not that green. Not this one though. Now guys, uh, as usual, now what we say should be taken as financial advice is purely educational. And also we do own some shares mentioned on the slides. According to experts, in 2023, there's a 60 to 90% chance of recession. And I'm sure you want to avoid that. Now over the past seven months, our Firo Pro model portfolio has grown by 18%, while the market has fallen by 3%. Now, if you're interested in learning how we did it, we've got a special free training just for you on the 23rd of March. So go ahead and sign up in the comment section or the description. Right, Jonathan. So uh, today we will be reviewing Kananga Growth Fund. This is quite highly requested. Yep. And they are also, you know, apparently one of the best performing funds over the past uh, more than 20 years. Yes. Right. So you can see they've outperformed the KLCI by a huge margin. Mm. Although if you started investing with them since the beginning, you had to wait nearly about 10 years before you start seeing the alpha or the, you know, yes, exactly. returns, right? Yeah, Which yeah. is yeah, I can around, see here. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around here, right? So yeah, anyway, tell us about it. Yep. Uh, so this is just a, a comparison between the KLCI and their growth. So far, they actually managed to grow about 442% as compared to KLCI about 56% only over the past 22 years. So uh, this is more of the uh, short-term and long-term period of how have they been performing so far. Uh, as you can see, uh, in the past one year, is actually down more than the KLCI. And the reason why also is because of uh, their stock portfolio is concentrated towards a certain industry, which I'll no, review later. No uh, presence actually, for yes, guessing. Uh, yes, right? uh, exactly. Yeah, actually you know already straight away, like why is it down yeah. so much compared to KLCI? And uh, if you look at the fund size, it's actually quite big. It is about 1.2 billion ringgit uh, they are managing. Previously, we did a video on Kenanga Growth Opportunity Fund. I think that one, they only manage about like 400, I believe, if I can Yeah, this is 1.2 billion. Yes, yes. This one is a quite a big, uh, some of fund size and yeah uh, this is the year to year performance you can see how has it been performing uh, as compared to the uh, benchmark KLCI okay so this is the asset allocation so you can see that so far for the latest data that they released which is on December 2022 about 13.5% is hold in cash yeah the remaining 86% it's uh, obviously it's in equity lah, in uh, stocks. And you look at this uh, according to their country and cash allocation, you notice that there's a small portion actually is allocated to Hong Kong and also one of the US in the uh, US company. Right. Yeah, and but it's only like 1.8%. Yeah, so yeah, that's about it for their asset allocation. And this is the sector surprise, allocation. Surprise. So yeah. now you know why they are down more than a benchmark, right? It's because about if you add 16 and 15%, about 31% is actually more towards catering the tech sectors. Yep. Yeah, and then about 19% is about financial service. And then- And of course, like banking hasn't done like really well as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty, uh, a, a bit only, uh, a bit improving, only, like maybe two, 3%, I, right, if I can right. count. Yeah, then the remaining is just like uh, all the random industries uh, that they hold. Okay, so this is the top 10 best performing uh, stocks. You can see that the number one is the Great Tech. Uh, that one actually uh, perform about 268% at the moment. Uh, this is of course the uh, aggregate cost for May 2022 compared to February's 2023 figure. And if you look at the other position size, uh, sorry, other companies, you'll notice some uh, interesting names also like Encom, Nilex, they also hold that. Um, and also Hibiscus also is making money. But the top three one is all related to tech. Right. Yeah. So that is the best performing uh, stock so far. And the top 10 worst, you can see another familiar name again, Hello. Revenue Group. Yep. And then there's LBS, Bina Group also. There's I believe a, this is a construction related company. Dnex is there. Dnex is, is over there. TNB. Yes. TNB. DIY. Uh, oh, they bought at the top. Uh. Yeah, exactly. TNB Ooh. and DIY. So Okay, sorry. To be fair, they didn't buy. Wait, they bought at the top, right? Thank yeah, you. kind of. That's why you're losing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Yeah, I agree. Great cost. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Blue Chick doesn't really tell you, it uh, doesn't really show that you can make great returns well, if you buy it at the top. Pharma Niagara was a blue chip. 
Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> blue state was a blue chip. Yeah. You know. Was was. Was. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you want a more HD version of what they own in their entire portfolio, so this is of all of the stocks that they virtually own. Uh, basically, I helped categorize it based on the largest amount invested to the lowest. So you can see the largest, right? Uh, front can is, I believe is one of the top 10. Yeah, see? The most that they invested and they make money about two times, which is pretty good. I mean, this tells you that uh, their analysis actually uh, paid off. Uh. Yeah. They bet big and they win big. So uh, yeah, that is something that I like about Kananga Growth Fund uh, is that uh, they invest what they know uh, or they invest what yeah. they're confident in. I mean, to be fair, they are quite diversified, mm. honestly speaking. I mean, a 30% allocation tech is not really like the worst thing in the world, right? Because mm. we know some retail investors who are like, 60, 70% or 100% into tech. So yep. it's really not that bad. Um, but you can see that it would have been a lot worse if they didn't have uh, QL resources or even to a, some extent, a PCAM, yep. things like that to hold a fort, public bank, you know, guys like that. So, and I think once you hit like 1.2 billion range, right? It's quite a big sum already. Yep. But I estimate in Malaysia, it's always about, once you reach 100 million, right? Uh, in net worth in stocks, I, it's time to get out. Yeah, that's that's just that's just me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because uh, if you got a hundred million, right, you need to start to uh find a way that can preserve that wealth, right? Yeah, Instead yeah. of just like betting in the market, which is you know, I mean, just as a small digression, right? Like mm. I imagine like um the amount that you would like to have, um, as a lifestyle, right? So maybe that's uh, let's say it's twenty thousand ringgit a month. So that's two hundred forty thousand a year. So you multiply it by about thirty. Mm. You gotta give or take uh, You multiply about thirty. What's that amount? The thirty three point uh, six million. Yeah, three point six million. So that's really sufficient for you to fund your lifestyle. Um, imagine if you had thirty six. That means you can now spend two hundred thousand. Yeah. Every month. Right. Right. So 200,000 puts you in a T.0001 already. So imagine you get 100, right? Like yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, can. You just don't need any. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, I just actually want to point a little bit more small point, which is over here, you notice that, hey, there's a Hong Kong exchange yeah. clearing limited. So yeah, they put in quite a sum of money over Seems here. Seems like a million. monopoly. Sounds uh, like a monopoly. Yeah, thing. sounds like a monopoly. But right now it's actually uh, losing money. lah. So yeah, I won't go through every single stock, but this is basically uh, the few stocks that you can see. Oh, and also one more thing is uh, they invested at Sanjay Bahad over here, a, a private company. Got it. Yeah, yep. Uh, so the tax, right, for 2023, 2024 unlisted tax. Ah, but I mean, <laughs> I think, I don't think they invested in it. They probably bought it and then it got delisted. And yeah. Become, yeah, most probably. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so this is the position size. You can see that the, Winners, yeah, it's about 8%, which is good. Uh, and then Great Tech is about also 3%. Uh, so these are the top few companies that is their largest holdings uh, uh, at the moment. Hey guys, if you're interested in building a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing, head over to the comment section or the description to sign up for our free masterclass so that we share with you exactly how we do it. Okay, so this is just a pretty uh, simple takeaway. So number one, they hold 53 stocks, although they hold a lot of stocks, but it's pretty diversified. Yes. Uh, it's not to say very, very concentrated like their previous fund that we did review. Yeah. That one, I believe is like 40, 50% is in tech. Uh, this one is like 30% and then the other 30% is like in finance, finance, then yeah. cash and then other stuff. Yeah. And then uh, another good thing that I really want to comment on their fund management is that they really bet big on things but that yeah. they're confident in. Uh. By their standards, yes. Yeah, yeah, by their standards and yes. on, they managed to win. So that is uh, pretty good. I mean, this tells you how uh, how's their fund management doing. Uh, the returns at least says it all. And then uh, if you actually calculate their gains, unrealized gain from the biggest position that they won, right? So it's like Great Tech, Front Can and KGB. These three stocks gain can actually cover all of the unrealized loss that they, yes. they are actually incurring. So that is actually uh, pretty interesting to know that. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a bit, uh, that's about it for that. I, I, I think the only thing I want to add is if you look at, in, in my experience, 
good funds typically have this characteristic. So they can have as many stocks as they want, but it will be best if they can have a concentration uh, in a few names only. So for example, if I eye boy right now, right? Mm. If I look at the top 10 position, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So 10, so I would surmise, right, that the top 10 positions is in roughly slightly under 50% of the funds. Yeah. Which is a good thing because, again, in my experience, typically those that do really, really well, are in fact, a bit more than that, their top six or seven positions constitute maybe closer to 80% mm. of the entire you know, companies. Whereas this one is like top 10 is around 50%. 50%, yeah. So uh, that's why you can see that they've not done as well as they could have. But again, they're still in that ballpark region. Mm. And I suspect also that they've let some of their winners run, right? Yes. Like Frank and Great yeah. Back, they're still holding. Encom, that's another one. Right. Uh, QL, Callington, not sure about Press Metal, but Yinsen, you know? So you always want to let your winners run and just by virtue of letting your winners run, you will get to that five companies equal 60, 70% of your portfolio kind of range. Yep, right? exactly. So that's really what um, like good portfolio construction in, in, you know, in my eyes is. Now, of course, in their defense, it sounds like I'm criticizing them, but in their defense, uh, they do manage 1.2 billion. Yeah, so yeah, there's only so much they can put in this individual uh, stocks we recently uh, covered what uh, iCapital mm. and iCapital has much fewer stocks than this. I think something like yeah, 20, uh, 25. Uh, something yeah, like exactly. That, around right? there. Uh, I'm seeing here way more than 25. Yeah, this has 53. 53, there you go. So, so like uh, even up. then, they are already also have, and they are a smaller fund, I believe. And even then, they are already having issues with uh, liquidity, mm. right? So, which means that you as a shareholder, um, again, I think I mentioned this in previous podcasts as well, or previous previous videos. Uh, look actually at the smaller companies, right? Usually, the smaller companies of of their holdings, right? There's a good chance that they want to buy more of it, but they can't. So you know, anything under one percent, I'm not saying it's a good thing. Obviously, revenue group is there, <laughs> but yeah. you know, look at some name, not CC. You know, I'm just looking at CCK. Yeah. MG, I don't know what's MGB, right. uh, you know, companies are that to really find more gems because there's a chance that these guys under 1% can become a 3, 4, 5, or even 8% in the future. Mm. All right. Okay. That is actually pretty uh, interesting. Now, uh, speaking about position sizing, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. So you can see that FirePro's portfolio position sizing is actually pretty concentrated uh we only hold like i believe like uh 15 stocks 15. at the moment correct yeah and uh if you look at the bottom performance we actually added one more which is called the telegram stock performance so basically the telegram stock performance is uh companies that we have interest on because of maybe there's a short short-term positive catalyst uh, that we are not really uh, holding in the Fire Pro portfolio. So this is like an additional stock idea that we share to our members in the Telegram group. And so far, this the performance has been doing quite well. But then I think recently, there's like two to three stocks actually is in the red right now, I believe. But overall for Fire Pro, it has been still very resilient, very good. Uh, this is the performance so far. You can check it out. And uh, if you want more information about Fire Pro and also maybe SIB program, you can check out our free sample. Uh, the link to this free sample is in the description and comments. Now, MJ, yeah. Yeah, guys, as usual, uh, thanks for staying all the way until the end. Come watch some of our other videos. And of course, like, comment, subscribe, usual stuff. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in the next video.